We made it home the point, the beauty of knowing God. How he's a king, how he's a king, how everything is about him, everything's about his glory, how every single thing is about him. Many of us think that, that it's all about us, that the world revolves around us, that God is something cool to better ourselves, something that we can better our lives with, that that's what it's all about, it's about us. But me and the crane, we beg the devil, not based on our opinions, but based on the scriptures. The scriptures declare that everything is about him. It's all about him. You're not doing God a favor by getting to know him. You're not doing him a favor. He's doing you a favor. He's done us favors. The whole thing is this. God creates Adam. Adam gets the most beautiful. Adam was satisfied with God and God alone. It wasn't he gave Adam and Adam was satisfied because he gave him the whole garden. Adam satisfaction wasn't in the garden. The only thing that reigned in his heart was God and God alone. Then Adam made the mistake and picked something over God. And what happens? Curse. What curse? What was his punishment? Did God strike him dead to where he was no life in him? No. He said the day you eat you'll die. What was the death he was separated from? The worst punishment ever. The worst punishment ever. He got separated from God. What a beautiful thing to have and what a terrible thing to lose. A relationship with God. And for many of us, I would be willing to believe that there are a whole lot of us in here, some of us who don't know God, and some of us who think we know God, but in actuality, we don't know. If we look at the scriptures and we look at the men who know God, who see God, they nerve them. There's no such thing as somebody who knows God but has zero affections for him. That doesn't exist. It's not just believing some story that somebody told you about, some dude died on the cross. That's not what this is about. It's about trusting in Jesus Christ. And when we trust in Jesus Christ, we have a heart change with new people, with new joys, new desires, new things we love. And our life's pursuit is Jesus Christ. It's not we trust Him and then just go on with our lives as they were. We're new people with a new life. New stuff we chase after. Our lives should be drastically different than they did before. Our life's pursuit is God and God alone. So many of us, I was, I was reading this article and it made a beautiful point. Made a beautiful point. It kind of makes it real for us as we talk about the beauty of having a relationship with God. It is a beautiful thing. And a lot of us will miss out on it. So many of us will miss out on it. Please don't miss out on it. The only reason we were made was to enjoy God and be loved by Him. That's what you were made for. We were made to glorify by God. Cars were made to run off of gas. You pour water and they don't work. And it's a waste. If we wait, if we use our lives for something else, it's a waste. It's not going to work. You won't be satisfied. A car will not run out of water. You will not be satisfied in this world chasing out other stuff. The only thing that gets truly satisfied is what you were made to be satisfied by, which is God. Many of us say, just accept Christ. But the article I was reading made a beautiful point, and it's so true. We don't accept Christ, he accepts us. He didn't do anything to us where we had to accept him back because he broke our relationship. All he did was be himself and love us. We broke the relationship. He has to accept us back. The most terrible thing would be to go your whole life and not know God. That's the most terrible thing that can ever happen. So what do we do? How do we get him to accept us? Do we pray a little prayer? Do we go to church? Do we learn some scriptures? No. None of that can work. None of it can work. We can do all the stuff we can. God requires perfection. None of us can be perfect. None of us can achieve perfection. One person came to earth that was perfect. Jesus Christ did everything we could do. He was tempted just as we are. He did everything we could not do. And they crucified him. He took your punishment. All we have to do is trust in his righteousness, not in our own. Not I accept you and now I'll be good enough to get to you. It's trust in his righteousness because we can't achieve our own and we have none. Trust in Jesus Christ. He died. He rose. That's how we get God to accept us. It's trusting in his son. And after trusting in his son comes affections for him, a heart change. 
So you might, why don't we, why don't we just close our eyes, just close our eyes, just close our eyes. Just so we can be without distraction, be without distraction, just for a moment. And I just want to pray, say a few words and pray, and we'll be out your way. Once again, I just want to reiterate the beautiful opportunity that each and every one of us had. We were created only, the only reason you were created was to know God, enjoy Him, and to glorify Him forever. That's what you were made for. So to do anything else is a waste. We only got a couple years on earth, but to trust in Him is to get the beautiful opportunity to get to know Him forever and to enjoy Him forever. That's the beautiful thing about trusting in Jesus Christ. Trust in Him. So I just want to pray, and I'll be enjoying. Father God, we thank you so much uh, for the beautiful opportunity we've had tonight. Um, just to, uh, to praise you, Father God, to, to look at who you are, to celebrate you as the king, to celebrate you as the one that deserves the glory, to celebrate lifestyles committed to you. Um, and we pray, Lord, that on tonight, um, that the truth that was put forth from your scriptures is truth because you revealed yourself in the scriptures. We pray that that truth that you would use that to break some hearts, Father God, and draw some people to yourself by your spirit, that you would accept us back as we trust in your son, Jesus Christ, and we realize there's nothing we can do except trust in Christ and his righteousness. And even that requires you draw us, Father God. So we pray um, that as we leave this place, lives will be changed, hearts will be changed. Some people will get to meet you for the first time, and others will, for the first time, spend their lives running after you, seeking you, and seeking that intimacy with you that so few of us have. So we thank you again for this night, Lord, um, and we pray that um, as we leave, um, you would give us the grace to glorify you, Father.